Welcome to OpenBXRX on BronxNet. I'm your host, Sanji Lopez, inviting you to get social with us at BronxNet TV on Instagram and Twitter and BronxNet Community Television on Facebook. Also, if you're watching us on cable, you can continue to stay up to date with our on-screen social media feeds, providing you the latest COVID-19 and community updates and important headlines. As we all know, most of New York is on pause and quarantined. And for abused women and individuals, this presents a danger of its own. Many advocates against domestic violence have increased concerns due to isolation. And for over 30 years, the Violence Intervention Program, VIP Mujeres, has been a community-based nonprofit organization dedicated to eradicating domestic and intimate partner violence. And their hotline continues to be open for those in need, even during this pandemic. We're joined by Carla Mejia, Violence Intervention Organizer at VIP Mujeres. Thank you for joining us virtually, Carla. Can we just start off with learning about VIP Mujeres and the services offered there? As you mentioned, Violence Intervention Program has been around for over 30 years. Um, it was created uh, in a grassroots effort to support survivors of domestic and sexual abuse, and it began in East Harlem. Um, we we do a lot of focusing in the Latino, Latina, Latinx community um, to provide like culturally specific services. Um, we have two residential programs uh, and we have three non-residential. That includes our emergency shelters. Uh, it includes our 24 seven hotline, our economic justice program and our community and outreach, our communications and outreach department. Um, so I'm the community organizer there. I've been there for a while, but I was, you know, raised in the Bronx. So, you know, um, I'm very much, very much part of, of, of the community that we're talking about today. And Carla, can we speak about the heightened dangers for domestic abuse at the time while people are in quarantine? There have been a surge of domestic violence incidents. Right. Uh, so like you mentioned, there are, we are in a moment of, high elevated crisis. And we already know that during these times, the violence and the tension at home uh, amplified. That is due to unemployment, that is due to just the nature of the pandemic, correct? Um, but I think more so for our, the survivors and victims with the stay at, um, at home orders by the city and you know by the governor, um, it makes it so that survivors cannot just like walk away. Um, they're quarantined, they're stuck with an abusive partner. Um, and so obviously that's, that, that just makes it that much more dangerous for our, for our, our members of the community. Um, so, you know, we, we have some advice for, for those that are currently quarantined with an abuser. Um, and very importantly is, you know, try to reach out to someone who you trust, talk to them about the possibility of what it would look like if they, you need to flee. So where are the documents of your child, all the documents that you consider to be important, um, your safety bag, um, tell them about what's going on, um, talk about, you know, if they could babysit for you. Um, because again, like it's not, it's also the children who are also at home now. So the children are also exposed to maybe possibly being abused or at minimum witnessing these high levels of abuse. And Carla, can we share um, the hotline and what um, an individual can expect when they call that hotline? Yeah, thank you. So Violence Intervention Program has a 24-7 bilingual hotline. Um, and when an individual calls, they're going to be, um, they're going to be connected to a, a professionally trained uh, crisis counselor, right? Um, they're going to be expected to be treated with respect, dignity, and compassion. Um, and they're also going to um, be supported with language. So if a person doesn't just speak Spanish or English, we do have other um, interpretation services to communicate with them. Um, they're going to be, you know, expected to talk about what is going on, but not necessarily in an invasive way because everything will be confidential at all times. Um, and we'll provide them services according to what they need. May we also have the hotline number, Carla, just so we can outline it here at the top of the show for anyone who is seeking um, assistance at this time. 1-800-664-5880. And I do want to add that um, 
this hotline is accessible not just to a person that is experiencing direct violence, but it's also accessible to anybody who is concerned for a loved one, um, someone in community. If there's a neighbor and you're concerned for them, you you could also reach out in the hotline and talk about what are some of the ways that you could support that individual. Right. And speaking of that, I mean, um, I see a lot of advertising by VIP when it comes to the importance of social solidarity. And that's what kind of you mentioned just now, like, you know, being there for your neighbor and being there for the community. Can you just tell me about the importance of that at this time? Mm -hmm. So in, in, in concept, the, the idea of social solidarity is understanding that we're all interconnected that especially more so you know reflecting on what's going on we realize that the health and the well-being of the individual is connected to the whole of the community in practice what that looks like is that if you are someone who carries more privilege than another individual you find ways to support them for example, if you had a, a nanny or you had a domestic worker and you were providing, you know, that you were using their services and at this moment um, there's, you know, you might be quarantined, continue to pay them, continue to pay them at least half of what you were paying them or, you know, at minimum continue to provide them with that financial support, right? Um, if you have someone who you know is going through it right now, offer practical support, offer to babysit, offer to go pick up some grocery stores, offer to send them resources, maybe calling them, you know, checking up on them, just really um, checking in for your neighbor at this point, right? Um, and believe in them. Believe the person that is telling you that they're going through something very severe, very traumatic at this moment. And can you also tell us, then, uh, um, just reassure um, viewers who are listening and might be, um, you know, needing this help right now. There's also always help for low income and POC survivors. So, like, you know, it's important to also highlight the people of color who are um, going through things and low income survivors as well. Can you tell us more about that? Yeah, part of and, and one of the key points right now for social solidarity is um, Knowing that at this moment, not all of our community members are treated the same and not everyone is receiving government relief funds, right? Our immigrant community right now is left out. And so, you know, part of it is donating to emergency funds. Violence intervention right now was not able to have our annual fundraiser, which allows us a lot of space to do as we, as, as we see needed with those funds. So we are urging people that if they have the ability to support or um, to go to our website, Violence Intervention Program, that org and um, try to donate whatever it is that you can. And if it's not us, try to donate to any other organization that you trust and that you um, that you, you you support. Right? Maybe even in a grassroots level, that's also very much needed at this point. And 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 understand that those 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 funds are going to go to providing support in every way. Right? Um, we do have crisis counseling right now happening. You know, we're still working remotely. We're providing over a hundred counseling sessions um, per week. And, you know, that has been transferred through telecommunications um, and telephones, but we're still here and we're still listening to any of the concerns that are happening. Um, our 24 seven online uh, hotline is open and we also have a chat service in our website. So maybe you might not be able to have the freedom to just pick up the phone and call, but you do have the, the ability to go to our hotline, I mean, excuse me, our website and, and, and chat through them. Um, again, our emergency um, shelters are still open. We're taking intakes right now. If you need to, if you need to leave, um, call us and we'll put you in, in in services that could get you into houses in the safer in a safer environment um and and you're going to be welcomed with open arms we're still here we're still providing support we're not going anywhere thank you for that and thank you to Vladimir Mujeres for you know continuing this movement even despite um lack of you know being together at this time, you're still in solidarity and still providing this assistance to those who need it the most. Um, before we go, Carla, can you also talk to us about the lack of movement and what comes next for survivors? Yeah. I, mean, I know VIP is still working on the forefront, but there has been there hasn't been a lot about this um, going around. A lot of this work hasn't been done. Can you tell me about mm -hmm. that? Um, 
yeah before i go into the lack of i want to talk about what is being done right because even 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 in it before COVID 19 our communities were mobilizing our communities were enduring high levels of trauma and they've just taken it to another another on another level on another side right so even now we're seeing for example on the community organizing side that the members are still mobilizing by reaching out to people who are currently quarantined with other with abusive partners they're reaching out um, we're still trying to provide like actual on the ground uh, community outreach so people know where the hotline is. We know that we're receiving, um, even though we might not be receiving the high volumes of calls, we know that's due to the fact that they're quarantined and might not be able to call, but the abuse is still happening. Um, I see community members who are delivering foods to other, to other sick members in our community. I've seen our community put, you know, chat groups and share resources and emotionally support each other. But yes, there is a huge, uh, or not, I don't know if the word huge would be the best word to use, but there is a lack of, you know, there was a lack of planning um, for what was to come during the quarantine stay, in, stay at home order, right? Where were these uh, uh, members of our community going to go. So we have to keep in mind that we always have to be prepared because our communities are always enduring high volumes of trauma and marginalized communities had to endure this for many years and are not receiving any of these like government refund uh, resources at the moment. Thank you again, Carla, for your time. And thank you to VIP Mujeres for your service and working diligently and remotely to provide these help, this help and resources to those who need it. And thank you, Sanji, for you know always reaching out and checking in on us. Um, every 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 media platform at this moment is extremely important for our members to receive the service that they need. So once again, thank you for having us. Happy to work with you. If you or anyone you know is experiencing abuse, please call the Violence Intervention Program hotline at 800-664-5880. Again, that's 800-664-5880. Also, visit VIPMujeres.org for more information and to find out how to donate to survivors. VXRX will be right back. 